Good evening. Welcome to the September, yes, it's September 3rd, Clifton Park Town Board meeting. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, Pat, if you'll call the roll. Captain Whalender, Captain Stender, here. Captain Romano, here. Captain Wallwear, Supervisor Barrett. Here, entertain a motion to approve town board meeting minutes of August 19th. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Romano, second by Ms. Wallwear. Discussion. Captain Whalender, yes. Captain Stender, yes. Captain Romano, yes. Captain Wallwear, here. Supervisor Barrett. Yes. Uh, communications and announcements, just a couple of quick things. Uh, Household Hazardous Waste Day uh, will be uh, this Saturday, so if you haven't signed up yet, please register. Uh, you can do that uh, here at Town Hall. Uh, call with any questions, 371-6651. Uh, Farm Fest weekend's coming up on the uh, 13th and 14th, so uh, please come out and support our farms. Uh, they need it more than ever. There's a whole slew of new regulations. Uh, from New York State that, uh, that are coming down on our farms and uh, it's already a difficult business as you see from farms going out of business, giving up, moving to other uh, options for, um, for income um, such as solar panels, it's an option. Um, thankfully, there are options for farmers that don't want to sell their property for development, which is a good thing, other than the programs the town offers, the, uh, the um, uh, grant funds we've been able to access, uh, working in partnership with some of our farms to protect them um, uh, permanently. Uh, but. Um, you know, it, it is more and more difficult to be a farm, and coming up in the next couple of years, uh, it's only going to become more of a challenge. So, uh, they certainly need our support uh, throughout the year, the ones that do operate throughout the year um, in particular. Uh, but this is the season that is extremely important for them. So, uh, so please be out there and support them. Farm Fest is the kickoff to the season, and it's it's a weekend where uh, many many people uh, do visit the farms in Clifton Park. Uh, however, don't forget them the rest of the fall. So hopefully we have a nice September like we had last year, and uh, people continue to support the farms throughout the fall uh, and. Um, we just implore you to uh, to do that, to help them stay in business and be successful, and uh, so they'll be able to continue to pass down uh, the land, their, their homestead, their farms, their business to the next generation. Uh, the pools close this weekend, as they do each and every Labor Day weekend, and I just want to uh, thank everybody that uh, had a hand in the in executing a successful year at the pools. Um, operating and managing the pools is not an easy task. Um, they're, they're basically open every day. Um, holidays such as July 4th they're open. Um, and uh, every Saturday and Sunday, uh, weather permitting of course. But um, I just want to thank everybody for a successful year. Uh, the weather was decent after early June. So if you did invest in a membership, I think uh, you certainly had ample opportunity to, uh, to get your money's worth. Uh, so uh, again, thank you everybody for your hard work for a successful year. Uh, the intersection improvements of 146 and 146A are going to be hitting another stage. Uh, I guess you could put this in the it's going to get worse before it gets better category, but um, so far there's been you know, very little effect. Uh, certainly they, they have the basic outline and pattern of, of what we've been working with while construction has been occurring. That has changed here and there, 
when, when needed. Um, but uh, what's going to happen is we have two weekends coming up. The first uh, will be the weekend of the uh, uh, 13th. The second will be the weekend of the 20th. So from that Friday through Sunday, uh, Friday evening, through uh, 10, 10 o'clock at night, through Sunday uh, evening, uh, access to and from 146A will be closed. So in other words, if you want to get to the intersection from 146A or want to get out of the intersection to 146A, you won't be able to do that from Friday the 13th uh -huh. uh, at 10 o'clock through uh, Sunday evening. Uh, DOT has told me that uh, They'll be working, quote unquote, around the clock to get get uh, this act, very important access point, opened as soon as possible on Sunday. But it will go into Sunday. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And then on uh, and then on Friday, uh, September 20th at 10 p.m., uh, the access to and from Bishop Ferry Road will be closed. Uh, and then uh, th that access point will be open on Sunday afternoon, and again, sooner, as soon as possible on Sunday, but both closures will go into Sundays. So if you want to access the intersection from Bishop Ferry, or if you want to, um, if you're in the intersection want to access Bishop Ferry Road, uh, you won't be able to do that from Friday evening the 20th through Sunday the 22nd sometime in the afternoon. So uh, that will be uh, certainly a challenge and something different. We'll have a lot of signage. We've uh, sent out we get a press release. Uh, we've got uh, information on our um, social media website. Uh, trying to spread the word as much as possible because that will be an inconvenience, especially if you get there and you didn't know. Uh, so there, there's plenty of detours to take. Please take them. And we appreciate uh, every, everybody's patience uh, as we uh, get this finished up. So it's going to get worse. And then by the end of the month, it'll be open. And I think we've already seen from the general... Uh, traffic pattern that's been in place since the construction started, um, it does have its benefits. It does keep traffic moving. There's less stacking at, um, at the intersection where the light was at Bishop Ferry uh, in, in 146, 146A. So uh, we've already uh, experienced, uh, I think, many of the benefits that will be realized when construction is completed. Obviously, once the construction is completed, uh, you don't have that mess, mess at the intersection, you don't have the changing traffic patterns and closures as I'm um, detailing here. Plus, we're go it's going to be a very pleasantly uh, aesthetic um, um, area once the, once the project is, is completed. And we've talked about that here, a lot of plantings, uh, new um, uh, we're going to have a new 50-foot uh, flagpole, uh, which won't be in the center of the of the roundabout. It'll be off to the side, to the east. Um, uh, the new sidewalks. Uh, so when it's done, there'll, there'll be uh, many, uh, many positives that will be evident. Um, right now, it's a challenge. So, But we do thank everybody for their patience. Uh, we're also... Uh, Finishing up, and you know, whenever we have these uh, sewer improvement, uh, these pipe projects, um, those two are a challenge because they're right in neighborhoods, and uh, we inconvenience inconvenience people for um, what can be a lengthy period of time, and that is certainly the case up on Blue Spruce Lane uh, in Country Knolls. So that uh, the sewer project's done, and the paving. Uh, process started today, so um, if you can avoid blue spruce, please do. Uh, there's a lot of equipment activity on the road th through the day, and um, the, the road is very rough as they 
prepare it to be paved. Uh, so it's just not a good situation. So if you can avoid using blue spruce as a motorist and certainly as a pedestrian, I did see some people biking and walking through there today. And, um, that's, that's not a good idea either. I mean, I, I know the contractor, the workers are obviously very careful, but, um, you know, there's uneven pavement, there's chunks of uh, road here and there. It's just not a good, good place for anybody to be walking through or biking through. So uh, please avoid Blue Spruce Lane until we're done, which will be in just a few days. Uh, any other uh, communications and announcements? Uh, Council yeah. the stand work first. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, we are entering, the youth court is entering into its sixth year. Okay. Yes. We are in the process of recruiting 7th through 12th grade kids who are interested in participating. Three weeks from tomorrow, Wednesday, September 18th, we will be holding our informational meeting at High School East in the Little Theater at 7 o'clock for any students who are interested in joining us. And um, there's more information on the website. I'm always available uh, via phone or email for further questions. Also, um, the Green Committee's Repair Cafe is we had a really good couple of recruitment sessions. And uh, we're getting, we do have uh, enough volunteers for our upcoming Repair Cafe, which will be on September 21st at the library. And that will be from 10 o'clock until Everything's fixed, hopefully. So uh, our repair cafe, this will be our very first repair cafe. We're looking forward to it. And uh, we're grateful that we have been able to gather as many volunteers as we did to help fix items and keep them out of the waste stream. So uh, what would be good items for people to bring? Uh, certainly not their cars. <laughs> not their There's cars. There's not going to be any brake jobs or anything. Um, probably not. Not their lawnmowers. No, nothing big. Right, nothing right. Big. So what, what would Whatever be a natural lamp? Self. I can bring my lamp. You can bring a lamp, yes. I'm okay. not quite sure if we have anyone signed up that can fix cell phones. Okay. But uh, we do have you know, things, uh, textiles, something that might need sewing, or small electronics like a toaster or perhaps a coffee pot, um, printers, uh, small items like that. There's no refrigerators. Fans, no refrigerators. But there is more information on our website on cliftonpark.org for you know, to look at some of the things that our volunteers will be able to fix. That's great. Yes. Yeah, thank you. As part of the Farm Fest event, Animal Control Officer Terry Cook and myself have an event called Perfects. It is at Riverview Orchards on September 14th from 11 to 2, and as far as suggests, it's all about dogs, cats, maybe a few bunnies, and pets for adoption. We're actually concentrating on the adoptions. The Saratoga County Animal Shelter will be available. There'll be rescue groups and foster groups. We'll have lots of cats, puppies, lots of kittens um, available. Um, so please, if you're looking for a pet, um, come and see us. We'll, we'll have the perfect one for you, and there'll be lots of volunteers there to show you um, all about each pet, so we put the perfect one for you. If you have a dog, you may bring your dog to the event. We have a $20 microchip clinic. They'll be available to you, and there'll be lots of things for you and your dog to see. There's numerous pet vendors coming about. Uh, the sheriff, uh, Officer K-9, will be there for a demonstration. Um, given the news of late, um, we all have been seeing over the last several days um, talk about evacuations of people, especially in their pets. And if you'd like to know more about what could happen if something happened here in Saratoga County in an emergency situation where we have to have an evacuation, the Saratoga County Animal Response Team um, trailer will be there. And it's, it's really fascinating if you haven't seen it go in. It's equipped with medical equipment and cages and, and everything that would be necessary to have to do an evacuation. The volunteers that operate this van um, have been very trained. I've overheard conversations about water rescues and cattle <laughs> rescues from Officer Cook. So, um, you know, if you're interested to see what could happen, um, you know, stop by and talk to them and, and see the trailer. It's really quite interesting. 
So we hope that we see you on the 14th at Riverview Orchards. Um, stop by and, and say hi, and um, maybe you'll go home with your new best friend. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. So lots going on. It's a busy, busy time of year at the, the end of the summer. You know, a full day camp is closed, the pools are closed, and a lot of those things that are, are, uh, keep us extremely busy during the summer. And now we're transitioning into fall and September so, and October. It's always extremely busy. Uh, so uh, as you can see, a lot going on. Please, uh, please join us. Pat, we have uh, several resolutions for consideration. If you would read through those, please. A resolution accepting the dedication of sewer systems from the Hatley Road subdivision along a portion of Hatley Road. Whereas GIA and SLLC wishes to dedicate uh, certain sanitary sewer improvements within the Hatley Road subdivision along 993 Hatley Road to the Town of Clifton Park Sewer Department. And whereas GJA and SLLC has provided as built drawings, inventory, and related documentation certifying the construction of the improvements in conformance with Saratoga County Sewer District standards, now therefore be it resolved that the town board hereby accepts the dedication of certain sanitary uh, sewer improvements and easements uh, per the inventory letter from Lombardi, Walsh, Davenport, and Amodio PC dated July 1, 2019, attached subject to final review of fees, title insurance, and related transfer documents by the town attorney. A resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an outside user agreement for the Rexford Board of District Number 2, Extension Number 1, for property located at 966 Grooms Road. Whereas the town board as commissioners of the Rexford Board of District Number 2, Extension Number 1, has received a request to extend service to Land owned by Harry C. Stamps III at 966 Rooms Road, Rexford, more particularly identified as SBL 276.1-50, and whereas the real property is located outside the current service area of the Rexford Water District Number 2, Extension Number 1, and whereas the Clifton Park Water Authority has determined that sufficient capacity exists within the Rexford Water District Number 2, Extension Number 1, to provide service to the property, and whereas the town board recognizes the environmental planning and policy objectives met by approving water service over alternate plans, alternative plans, now therefore be it resolved that the town board as commissioners of the Rexford Water District number, uh, number two, extension number one, hereby approves an outside user connection to the district's facilities for property located at 966 Rooms Road, Rexford, and be further resolved pursuant to resolution number 208 of 2005 that the fee for connection to for connection to the facilities of the Rexford Water District Number Two, is eight hundred dollars per lateral, which fee will be used to pay down remaining bonded debt associated with the infrastructure, and be it further resolved that the outside user agreement shall be assigned to the property at nine sixty six Rooms Road, Rexford, SBL two seven six point one fifty, and connected to the Rexford Water District Number Two Extension Number One facilities, the agreement to run with the land. A resolution extending. An intermunicipal agreement between the town of Half Moon and the town of Clinton Park for the provision of animal control service. Whereas pursuant to section 119-0 of the general municipal law of the state of New York, the parties are authorized to enter into binding agreements for the cooperative performance of various municipal projects, contracts, and functions. And where the towns of Clifton Park and Half Moon recognize the benefit to both municipalities that arise from the cooperative provision of service to their residents, and whereas resolution number 15 of 2014 authorized an agreement between the town of Half Moon and the town of Clifton Park for shared services in the area of animal control, and whereas Clifton Park and Half Moon wish to extend an existing agreement whereby Clifton Park will provide on-call and sick-slash-vacation coverage for the Half Moon Animal Control Department, and whereas Clifton Park has the personnel and equipment to provide on-call and sick-slash-vacation coverage for the Half Moon Animal Control Department. Now, for me, it was all that the town board approves extending the intermunicipal agreement between the Town of Half Moon and the Town of Clifton Park for the provision of animal control services per the attached agreement and be it further resolved that the intermunicipal agreement between the Towns of Clifton Park and Half Moon is hereby extended for the period commencing September 1, 2019 through December 31, 2020. A resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an agreement with uh, Bricer LLC for a no-cost web-based web tool for tracking fire and safety code of compliance, whereas Chevrolet Fire Marshal has requested a database for tracking periodic safety inspections, and whereas Stephen Myers, Director of Building and Development, Bill, 
uh, recommends that the compliance engine from Bricer LLC to provide an internet-based based tool to track and drive code compliance at no cost to the town. Now, therefore, be resolved that the town board hereby accepts the recommendation of uh, Mr. Myers and be further resolved that the supervisor is authorized to execute the attached three-year agreement letter from Briar LLC, uh, 4355 Weaver Parkway, Warrenville, Illinois, at a cost to at no cost. Excuse me, at no cost to the town. Resolution authorizing the hiring of Emily DeGrasso, Del Grasso, and Chad Burks for the end of the 2019 summer recreation full day camp day summer camps. Whereas vacancies and staffing were created due to employees returning to college prior to the end of the summer camp, and whereas the town board wishes to maintain staffing levels for the Department of Parks and Recreation to throughout 2019 summer recreation full day camp season, and whereas Milo Kramer, Director of Parks, Recreation, and Community Affairs, has recommended that Emily Del Grasso, Town of Road, and Chad Burks, Miller Road, be hired to fill the vacancies. Now, therefore, be resolved that Emily Del Grasso and Chad Burks shall be hired to staff for the town's summer recreation full day camp retroactively effective um, August 19th through August 23rd, 2019, to be paid $9.75 per hour. A resolution authorizing Amy McGreedy Mc 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 to serve alcoholic beverages at a gathering to be held at Collins Park on September 14th, 2019. Whereas Amy McGeady is hosting a gathering at Collins Park and has requested permission to serve alcohol in the form of beer and wine at the event. And whereas Amy McGeady has submitted a permit application for use of the pavilion at Collins Park on September 14, 2019 from 2 to 7 p.m. for a gathering. Now therefore be resolved that Amy McGeady, Mystic Lane, Clifton Park is hereby authorized to serve beer and wine at a gathering to be held at Collins Park on September 14, 2019 from 2 to 7 p.m. A resolution authorizing Ken Way and GE Energy Consulting to serve alcoholic beverages at a gathering to be held at Collins Park on September 6, 2019. Whereas Ken Way and GE Energy Consulting are hosting a gathering at Collins Park and has requested permission to serve alcohol in the form of beer and wine at the event. And whereas Ken Way of GE Energy Consulting has submitted a permit application for use of the pavilion at Collins Park on September 6, 2019 from 2 to 7 p.m. for a gathering. Now, that will be resolved that Ken Wee of GE Energy Consulting, Fairhill Road, Clifton Park, is hereby authorized to serve beer and wine at a gathering to be held at Collins Park on September 6, 2019, from 2 to 7 p.m. A resolution adopting a local law of 2019 to repeal and replace Chapter 156 of the Town Code relative to door-to-door -door <coughs> solicitations and peddler's licenses. Whereas Chapter 156 of the Town Code provides for the issuance and administration of licenses to peddlers and door-to-door -door solicitors within the town, as authorized by Section 136 at SEC of the Town State Town of New York State Town Law, and whereas on August 19, 2019, the Town Board held a public hearing on a proposal to update and modernize the chapter by increasing license fees, provide for a more comprehensive license administration system within the clerk's office and to provide an administrative appeal of license denials and revocations to the town board for good cause shown. <clears throat> and whereas the proposal also repeals unused sections of the former chapter, updates existing provisions, and renumbers sections of the chapter, resulting in a complete rewriting of Chapter 156 of the town code relative to peddling and soliciting for commercial purposes within the town. Now, there be, now therefore be resolved that... Re re uh, that the town board hereby adopts local law of 2019, pursuant to which it is hereby resolved that Chapter 156 of the town code is hereby repealed, and be further resolved that the new Chapter 156 attached is hereby adopted to replace the section and chapter repealed. A resolution awarding a contract for construction, management, and inspection for the Siddeley Road at Wooden Road and Crossings mm -hmm. Boulevard. Uh, whereas, by Resolution Number 5, 2016, the Town Board authorized the Supervisor to execute an application for beyond pavement funding for traffic and pedestrian improvements at the intersection of Siddeley and Wooden Roads, and whereas, by Resolution Number 290, 2017, the, the Board authorized funding in the first instance for the Siddeley Road Improvements and Traffic Signals Improvement Project under Marcuselli funding requiring a 20% local match. And whereas Clifton Park has been designated as local grant administrators for the combined Sidley Road Improvement and Traffic Signal Improvement Project, 
here and after referred to as the project and identified as capital PIN number 1759.84 and whereas the project will improve transportation and safety within the Sudowie Road corridor for vehicles, pedestrians, and cyclists and we will be administered in partnership with Town Half Moon. And whereas by resolution number 206 of 2015, the Town Board awarded a contract to MJ Engineering for the project based on a solicitation for expressions of interest to all the engineering firms and consultants approved by the New York State Department of Transportation Region 1 for the design and engineering for the project. And whereas the controller has previously established a capital projects fund to account for the cost of the project, and whereas MJ Engineering has provided a consultant agreement for the construction and inspection services in an amount not to exceed $229,000 based on the total estimated cost of the project per New York State DOT regulations and guidelines, and whereas the town is eligible to seek 100% reimbursement from New York State DOT for eligible construction and inspection costs associated with the combined project under that PIN number, now therefore be resolved that the town board accepts the proposal from MJ Engineering with the bar for construction management and inspection services for the project, and be further resolved that the controller is directed to increase the capital projects fund by $229,000 to pay costs associated with the contract in the first instance, and be further resolved that the supervisor is authorized to sign the attached contract with MJ Engineering for construction, inspection, and estimating services. A resolution authorizing the sale of equipment declared a surplus by the town board and authorizing departments to sell the surplus equipment at public auction. Whereas department heads have identified vehicles equipment for the attached as surplus property and whereas based on the recommendation of Highway Superintendent Bull and department heads the town board declares the items on the attached list as surplus now, therefore, be resolved that the town board authorizes the highway department to sell the surplus equipment as is through an upcoming online public auction. Any questions on the resolutions? Okay, Pat, if you can read the headings and we'll consider each one individually. Resolution number 202 of 2019, a resolution accepting dedication of sewer systems from the Hatley Road subdivision along a portion of Hatley Road. So Second moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Mr. Whalen. Discussion? Council Whalen? Yes. Council Standard? Yes. Council Romano? Yes. Council Wallace? Yes. Vice President? Yes. Resolution number 203 of 2019, a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an outside user agreement for the Rexford Water District number 2, extension number 1, for property located at 966 Rooms Road. So moved. Second. By Mr. Whalen, second by Ms. Wallet. Uh, pleased to uh, be able to approve this extension of new water service to uh, the uh, customer. Okay, any discussion? Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Sandler? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallet? Yes. 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 Resolution number 204 of 2019, a resolution extending an intermunicipal agreement between the Town of Half Moon and the Town of Clifton Park for the provision of animal control service. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Wallowitz, second by Mrs. Standart. Uh, we have um, been engaged in this partnership with the Town of Half Moon since 2014, and it's been very successful uh, for both towns. Uh, it's a great example of how sharing services across uh, municipalities can be successful, and uh, we appreciate our part not only this partnership, but all of our successful partnerships with the Town of Half Moon. Um, Half Moon, through, through this agreement, Half Moon has been able to save money and our part-time animal control officers that work nights and weekends have been able to attain some additional hours. So it's, it's worked, uh, worked well for everybody. Terry Cook, our animal control officer, is here tonight. Um, so far, so good with this agreement? Fine. Yeah, good. Very good. Um, any questions, discussion for myself or Terry? Okay, I, I'm um, very, uh, very pleased to move, move this forward and continue this partnership. Okay. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Sandart? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowood? Yes. Vice Mayor? Yes. Resolution number 205 of 2000. 
19, a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign an agreement with Briar LLC at a no-cost web-based tool for tracking fire and safety code compliance. Second. Moved by Mr. Standard, second by Mr. Whalen. This was, uh, as the resolution uh, suggests, this was a um, request of our fire marshal, Cheryl Reed, and Steve Myers, and it's, uh, it's an opportunity to streamline uh, our uh, ins fire ins inspections and um, speed up the process. So um, it'll be a very good step forward for the uh, bookkeeping, tracking, uh, and overall execution of the many fire inspections that our folks are responsible for on an annual basis. Um, any discussion? Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Standard? Yes. Councilman Romano? Yes. Councilman Wallowit? Yes. Yeah. Council Bear? Yes. Resolution number 206 of 2019. A resolution authorizing the hiring of Emily Delgosso and Chad Burks for the end of the 2019 Summer Recreation Full Day Summer Camps. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard. Second by Mr. Whalen. We had a couple of uh, late hires, Whalen. Yeah. This is for uh, Full Day? Yes, uh, the last week of full day camp, we were, uh, as far as campers, we were full, and we had um, some of our counselors who needed to go back to college, um, and a few who are um, doing fall sports. So we got these two great individuals from uh, Star Point Church. Uh, they worked with their vacation Bible school, and they did a fantastic job at full day camp. Good. The, um the whole calendar, school calendar, and then our camp calendar was a little later in the year than it normally is, correct? Yes, yeah, the school let out a week later, so for us to do our full eight weeks of camp, we went a week later than we normally do. Yeah, so put us in a position where, you know, once we get into August, particularly mid-August, um, counselors and other seasonal employees that attend college uh, begin to go back. Um, particularly if they play a sport, then they have to leave you know, early to, to mid-August uh, to get back to school. Once we start getting into late August, that, that problem can become that much more of a challenge. So uh, we were able to, to hire a, a couple of young men and a young lady uh, to uh, fill in at the end of camp to ensure we had the proper amount of staffing and uh, the, these two folks are, uh, have great experience in this uh, with their own camps uh, affiliated with their church so um, that was uh, that worked out great so uh, glad to have them and who knows maybe we'll have them back if they so choose uh, questions Councilman Whalen, yes. Councilman Standard, yes. Councilman Romano, yes. Councilman Wallowick, yes. Provider Bear. Yes. Resolution number 207 of 2019, a resolution authorizing Ann McGeady to serve alcoholic beverages at a gathering to be held at Hollis Park on September 14, 2019. Second. Second. Moved by Ms. Wallowick, second by Mr. Whalen. We have two uh, resolutions here um, that require town board approval if people are interested in serving alcohol when uh, renting the town facility. Yeah. Councilman Whalen? Yes. Councilman Sandark? Yes. Councilman Germano? Yes. Councilman Wallowin? Yes. Councilman Barrett? Yes. Resolution number 208, 2019, the resolution authorizing Ken Wee and GE Energy Consulting to serve alcoholic beverages at a gathering to be held at Collins Park on September 6, 2019. So, second. Moved by Mr. Whalen, second by Mrs. Standard. Discussion? It's not Friday the 13th yet. Yeah, we're getting back. Uh, why don't you turn that off, Pat, because it's going to... Can you hear me? No. Councilman Whalen. Yes. Councilman Standard. Yes. Councilman Romano. Yes. Councilman Wallet. Yes. Yes. Resolution number 209 of 2019. A resolution adopting local law number 7, 2019, to repeal and replace the chapter 156 of the town code relative to door to door solicitations and peddlers' licenses. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard. <laughs> Second by Ms. Wall. I'll just talk a little louder. Second by Ms. Wallowit. 
Uh, Tom, if you could just quickly go through the uh, the major changes that were made. I want to thank uh, Pat and Teresa Bropston. Pat was not here at the hearing, but uh, was able to um, uh, provide uh, provide us with some very good ideas and input uh, prior to the hearing. Uh, and uh, so the the legislation that was presented at the hearing is being considered this evening. Uh, there were no changes made, correct? No changes from the public right. hearing. No. All right. So uh, this increases the license fee from, I believe it was $100 uh, a year up to $250 a year, plus $25 per each employee, for each agent. Uh, and it provides a, um, a uh, appeal mechanism to the town board, which is actually statutory. Uh, that that appeal mechanism stay with the town board. So if a license, it provides better criteria for the clerk to deny a license uh, and some, some background information that the clerk's office can obtain uh, to, to weigh that license. It shortens the time frame or provides a time frame to do that. And then if a license is denied or later revoked, it provides an appeal process to the town board. And it uh, has some, we took out some um, outdated provisions um, uh, that were not being used. There were references to paddling off of boats. I think the canal isn't as active as it once was. Um, we took that out. Uh, we took uh, references out to uh, licenses on public property, on park property. We now issue those licenses. And we provided just a better series of um, basic information from the applicant, such as local address, website, website address, email, uh, address of an owner or responsible manager, so that we can get in touch with uh, them quickly if they are out of town based. And, um, and if there are issues that arise uh, that we could bring to their attention short of having to revoke a license, the clerk's office will certainly uh, do that, and uh, and it maintains a uh, penalty for offenses, so that the uh, security staff can issue tickets as well under the last section of the provision. But it was enough of a change in terms of taking things out, renumbering, reordering that we really felt between Teresa, Pat, and I that the better way to proceed was just to to um, repeal the entire chapter and replace it with a newly written one which we went through a number of drafts uh, with so between the clerk's office and the town attorney's office. And the original one was 1970? Yeah, yeah. It was time. It was time. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting because um, there are still organizations that choose to market products in this fashion. I think generally with with homeowners and, well, not just homeowners, but people that, any resident of Clifton Park or any other town, uh, I think generally as time has moved forward, this type of marketing is looked upon with uh, uh, looked upon, um, you know, with less uh, Likeability, maybe is the, is the best way to put it. Uh, I, I think there's less and less people that want to be bothered at the door, um, and there's less and less people that would choose to have products marketed to them in this fashion. Um, I think a lot of that is societal with online shopping, online advertising, online marketing, certainly. Um, things have changed, uh, but there, there's still businesses that choose to market their products this way and uh, it is still protected uh, and something that uh, we don't see can be completely eliminated. However, as with other types of quote-unquote speech that cannot be eliminated, uh, common sense uh, stipulations can be applied to, uh, to make sure that there is a process that uh, needs to be followed, uh, time frames, 
so on and so forth. Fee schedule, everything that uh, was just discussed in the uh, changes, and it was time for the uh, code to be updated. So uh, I think uh, I think the proposed changes um, are uh, are applicable to uh, today's marketing efforts and today's. Uh, society and through the hearing process and, and Pat's input with Teresa and uh, Tom's um, uh, draft that uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a prudent step to make these changes uh, this evening. All right. Uh, any uh, comments, questions? Okay. Pat? Council Valen. Yes. Council Yes. Council Romano. Yes. Council Yes. Yes. Resolution number 210 of 2019, a resolution awarding a contract for construction management and inspection for the Sydney Road at Wooden Road and Crossings Boulevard, uh, tip number 1759.84 project. So moved. Second. Moved by Mrs. Standard, second by Mr. Whalen. So we're looking forward to this project coming to fruition in 2020. Um, we uh, successfully secured grant funding in partnership with the Town of Half Moon. Uh, the, these projects do take time to, uh, from beginning to end, and, uh, but we're getting there. So we're looking at 2020. Uh, just to quickly review some of the improvements, and we've talked about this project many times here at the town board meetings, but uh, there will be an extension of the sidewalk um, from which will go from Crossings Boulevard down Siddeley Road by Twin Lakes Apartments. Um, there will be a new turning lanes at the Siddeley Wooden Road intersection, and uh, as well as new traffic lights and improvements at Crossing at the Crossings Boulevard uh, intersection with Siddeley Road. So that that corridor will uh, uh, will be much much improved uh, for traffic flow and pedestrian access and those were the two goals uh, anything that you want to add here john yes just with the uh, installation of the traffic si signals mm -hmm. it will be interconnected signals so they'll actually instead of the typical loop detectors under the pavement uh, where each signal operates independently based on timing in a control box uh, this will actually just the signals based on stacking from an intersection, so uh, it will adjust based on actual traffic conditions. Supposedly, they talk to each other. They talk to each other. Yes. Yeah. So. I'm not sure what language, but they do yeah. talk to each other, uh, which is good. And and what John just mentioned were the loops in the pavement, and we just had an issue at the Shen uh, entrance on 146. They had a lot of uh, road work and paving done. And suddenly one day the lights weren't, the, the traffic light on 146 was not working properly and causing stacking on, on 146. Uh, we called DOT, they went to uh, review the situation and the, the loops in the pavement were disturbed. So the, the lights weren't functioning because once those loops, well they were functioning but the timing was not, uh, was not correct. Because once those loops are disturbed, then obviously they no longer detect if a car is there at the light or not. So when you're coming off the, when you want to go from the Shen campus to 146 and you're sitting there at the light, there's a loop in the pavement that detects your car, and that's what sets the, um, sets the lights in motion to give you a green light so you can get out of the campus. Uh, once that was eradicated, well, the light just, just went uh, on a regular floating basis, so it was not working um, uh, efficiently. So what they did was they installed a microwave system on the pole, which shoots down at that intersection. So if there is a car or cars at the Shen uh, uh, exit looking to get out on 146, the light was being triggered by that what they call the microwave system that was attached to the pole. So it's it's acting as if the loop is still in the pavement, it's just not in the pavement any longer, it's attached to a pole. 
So it's doing the same thing. So once they put that in a couple of days later, the situation was uh, was settled. But um, yeah, so those loops are not the best. These these new smart traffic lights, as they're called, are a much better system, and hopefully it's something we can get throughout the town. All right, very good. Any discussion? Okay, yes. 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 Items here, I don't know if any of them would be eligible for the repair cafe, perhaps we can. <laughs> Some of them have already gone through the repair <laughs> cafe. Uh, the highway repair cafe. The highway cafe. repair <laughs> cafe. Uh, just, again, we're, highway departments have a great, uh, um, the thing that they do a lot is gather junk, so we're just still trying to clean things out, and uh, um, this is another push in that direction. Uh, this is things, these are things that can still, uh, they still have life to them, they can work better for uh, someone else, uh, but for our operations, uh, we've moved in a different direction with many of these things. Uh, one, one note I do want to make, there, there were almost uh, two sweepers on this list. Uh, thanks to our auto mechanics, they were able to tear apart sweepers four and seven. Uh, they took the good from the bad and put the good and the good together, and we were able to uh, save one whole sweeper, so uh, we got our little Frankenstein out there now, and uh, but she's running really good, mm. and um, and so we only have one sweeper on there, and then uh, the, uh, the rest of the stuff I, I put down as miscellaneous items, not really things that we inventory, but it gives you an idea of some of the uh, items that we're trying to uh, clean up and could have monetary value uh, for the town. Yeah, and everything here is very old, right? I mean, you've got a a uh, large tire machine, uh, wood splitter, uh, the sweeper you just mentioned, uh, 2006 pickup, uh, fire wooden logs. Yeah, uh, fire wooden logs, uh, that is a pile of logs that we have down Ray Road. Oh. Um, it's about uh, 200 feet long, 20 feet high, and uh, between 40 and 50 feet wide. Uh, Highway departments auction this stuff off all the time. Yeah, um, we could get some money for it, but not a lot. That's a pretty good, that's a pretty good pile. Yep. Every storm that comes, we Is tear it? down a bunch of trees. Yeah. And Is it uh, exactly. how much it of it stacks up? Firewood? I don't know. It's it's a mixture. When people are looking for firewood, they're looking for everything as one size and one type. This yeah. is a lot of stuff. Probably a mix of 50-50 hardwood and soft. Um, probably 30% of it is not in good shape and turns rotten. No. Um, but we do a lot of uh, oak and hickory around here, so there's a lot of that. Yeah. Hmm. But you have to take the whole bundle. Uh, yeah. 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 It's a lot. So you just have to sift through and get to the good stuff. Oh, no, you have to take it all. No, no, after they buy it. Right, right. Then they can right. sift through. We, we don't have to we'll, take it. We'll first. stand there and make sure they take the whole yeah, thing. Exactly. <laughs> All right, good. Well, that makes sense. We could have a bonfire. Yeah, that's, a, that's an idea. Where, where would you like to have that, that acorn app? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we can see acorn app from space. <laughs> <laughs> Not a big market for big far, uh, bonfires. Uh, okay, any discussion? Yes. All right. Uh, any other business to come before the town this evening? All right. Seeing none, we've got a public privilege. If you'd like to speak on a town matter, please raise your hand. We'll ask that you come forward. State your name and address for the record, and please keep it to five minutes or less. Young man? No? <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Mr. Whalen. Yes. 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 And we'll get this uh, PA system here fixed too. Yeah. Yeah.